in the 1820s to 1830s, the fur brigades from the Hudson Bay Company would rendezvous at this point. It was the first point on the Willamette River that you could access the valley and actually make overland routes as opposed to going upstream on the Willamette and spending all your time on the river. What we're doing here this weekend is providing the public just a small glimpse of what life would have been like for those fur trappers. A larger camp that would have traveled with those brigades of 75 to 100 people, men, women, and children, setting up this camp while the trappers would go up the uh, smaller tributaries and streams to set traps and run trap lines. Maybe coming, staying out for two or three days and then coming back to the main camp. These camps left here at Shampooey and they went as far south as the San Joaquin Valley in California and as far east as the Great Salt Lake Basin. Oh, we, we have been on the brigade uh, before. We were at the, the packing horses and uh, heading south, setting up traps in areas to be able to trap the beaver. Um, and it's, it is hard life, but it is good. And uh, we make it down and then uh, turn around and we come back and we have plenty of, to uh, bring back to uh, the Hudson Bay Company. And uh, it, is, uh, <laughs> it is grand life, it is grand life. Yeah. For us as living historians, we're trying to present to the public what it would have been like. A little glimpse into the past, as it were, and explain how camps worked and what kind of food did they eat, and how did they cook it, what were their weapons like, what kind of events did take place, and how did they pass the time, what were they trading to the Hudson Bay Company for, and what were they getting in return. And the other thing that's great about it is the camaraderie that was shown by these people, and we try to relive that ourselves, too. Winter, you could have snow and freezing water. If you were trapping, you were spending a good part of your day knee-deep in ice water because you would travel in the water rather than getting your scent on the bank. By the time you were 30 years old, you were an old trapper. If you were, tra if you were trapping, um, you had arthritis in your knees and ankles, and... Uh, uh, most of them died at a young age. To see what the life was like many, many years ago, and end up seeing that uh, this is how we end up living. These are, uh, we are your ancestors. We are the ones that end up having to bring, uh, the explore this area, to bring this area to life, to allow you to be able to live in a uh, beautiful area such as this. What happens here is an economy based on trade, and the trade is in furs. I would trade for items such as my coffee, my flour, my rice. I would also trade for blankets. But the Hudson Bay Company paid his men, they paid their men in, uh, made sure that they had once a year uh, trousers, two shirts, a blanket, the necessary things that they needed. But you'd also trade some of those away. You might trade it for a, a buckskin shirt. You might trade it for some beads that you might later on trade again. With the decline of the furs, because the Hudson Bay Company trying to trap everything out before the Americans come out here, so the Americans won't find anything here and won't stay. Um, but what we see is those fur trappers who are retiring, who have married into the local communities, they don't want to have to leave this area because their families are here. They become the first farmers, and then they start the very first farms out here on the French Prairie. So we go from a fur trade economy to the very first agricultural economy, which here in Oregon becomes one of the biggest economies on the West Coast. be a grand feast tonight when uh, the brigade comes in. Monsieur le doctor end up asking us to end up bringing the food for them because they uh, he knows that they had a tough time coming up from California. The, uh, and uh, so but uh, they they seem to have a good number of furs and others so that uh, it will be uh, at least a good return and we need to feed them and uh, yes as uh, Fiona end up saying that uh, it will be a fine feast tonight. I think uh, we'll have uh, plenty of food and plenty of drink and, um, and singing and dancing and we'll have grand time.